give me a call. Sweet, a burner. All right, so this week's installments of Amphibia were definitely the most chill of the season thus far. Granted, we're only three episodes in. Instead of a full-length breakdown, I'm gonna focus on just a few highlights and shine some light on how this episode accelerated Sprig's character development while also setting the stage for the following episodes with two crucial plot points. And as always, if you want to stay in the loop of all things Amphibia during our Season 3 coverage, then please subscribe to the Roundtable with notifications on so you never miss a video. So first off, we had Thai Feud a very heartwarming episode that I would almost treat as a sequel to Hopping Mall due to Sprig's ambitions throughout this episode. From the jump, we see how amped Sprig is to finally be a part of a larger family. He doesn't want to be treated like an outsider, but as if he's another child to the Boon Choys. And you may immediately recognize this as a parallel to Season 1. The first few episodes focusing on Anne and Hop Hop's relationship and the transition from Anne being treated like an outsider to a member of the Planter family, one that Hop Hop would eventually recognize as another granddaughter. But now the situations are reversed, and with Sprig being the most hyperactive of the three planters, it makes sense he'd be the one that would land himself in that position. Wanting to prove himself, he tags along with Anne and Mrs. Boonjoy, I really wish we had a first name, to the family restaurant, where a super fan of the family business reveals that he wants to bring all of their delicious food to all of Los Angeles. But you know, that's his own business. He has a food truck. That's not awkward at all. So in order to ensure the future of the family business, Sprig decides to go head to head with this fanboy and sabotage the food truck. I'm loving how these Earth episodes are pulling from real world current issues, such as elder fraud in the previous episode, and now cultural preparation here, and exploring them in a way that doesn't feel preachy. They're not beating you over the head with thing bad. Hell, this food truck guy had the best intentions. He's just very naive. But while still going for the jokes, the viewer can easily understand that this isn't right. But switching gears back to Sprig, I feel as if this episode truly cements how important family is to him. For such a long time, it really has been just him, Hop Hop, and Polly. His parents are gone. He knows of the planter family tree, but the actual connections stop at his sister and grandfather. Hopping Mall showed us how confusing and painful it can be to lose your parents without even being able to remember them. Sprig is now in a position where he can fill that void, and he's desperate to do anything to make that happen. So it was sweet to see Mrs. Boonchoy recognize his efforts, alongside how important he is to Anne and vice versa. It got me a little choked up, I won't lie. And this episode also brought to our attention a brewing plot thread, as Anne tasks Hop Hop and Polly to do some research from portals while they're gone. And in the next episode, Avengers in Cat Sitting, Anne immediately expresses her frustrations over the lack of information. I've seen viewers frustrated over the lack of, I suppose, intensity so far in this season, at least on the Earth side of things, but I am glad that the characters are at least actively looking for a way home. There's obviously only so much they can do with limited resources. I do find it surprising that the show isn't using its staple dark humor to explore anxieties that characters are enduring. Like, there's no way they're not all in fear that their loved ones are going to be dead when they get back, right? It's completely okay for the show to want to stay a bit more lighthearted while they still have time. But at this point, I wish we were given something. This could change in the future. The next episode could give exactly what I've been waiting for. But three episodes in, I can't help but to point it out. And I can't fault anyone else for doing the same. But with next week being fight at the museum, where Anne and the Planters attempt to commit a robbery, and we know from promos that Silver Frobo will show up, I assume they're going to recognize something from Amphibia, and that'll be their next major clue home. Anne found a skip man on the way to Newtopia, so it makes sense for the inverse to happen as well. Overall, Avengers and Casting was a cute episode, but my main takeaway from it, alongside Thai Feud, is that the Planters' public mistakes are going to come back and bite them in the ass. They keep slipping up in their disguises. Hell, someone noticed Hop Pop's fake nose in this episode. And is that a fake nose? Uh, I could sure use some coffee. All of the places they've been to should have security cameras. Someone snapped a selfie of them when they first arrived on Earth. And beyond all of that, they're making this a consistent pattern. When the FBI finally do show up, which I thought would have been in Thai Feud, I would not be surprised if they amassed a vast amount of evidence. The walls will be closing in. The beginning of this episode also revealed that we're now canonically a week into Season 3. That is how long Anne and the Planters have been on Earth. And I'm curious on the timeline of future episodes that take place in Amphibia, such as the upcoming episode Unit and Olivia. Are they going to happen in real time while Anne and the Planters are having all these adventures on Earth? Or like Turning Point, will they occur at previous moments in time? Don't know, but I'm so excited for next week, given that both segments seem as if they'll really push forward the overarching story, as the episode Temple Frogs is paired with Fight at the Museum. 
which judging by the synopsis and the season 3 opening, we'll see the invasion of the robot dragonflies. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What do you think? What were your takeaways from this episode? Let us know in the comments down below or tweet your thoughts over at Roundtable Vids and you can find me at Vox. We're also on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!